Hey there stampers. So today I'm excited to be here to share with you a fabulous new tool that Stampin' Up! Is re has released. Um, it's called the Stamparatus. So this is a stamp positioner. So it helps you position your stamps um, so that you can stamp perfectly. Um, but there's lots of different ways that you can use it. So I'm excited to get my hands on them. Um, now this product is only available um, to reserve until the end of tomorrow, which is December 30th. Um, so I will have, I have all the information on my blog at stamptreasures.com, so feel free to take a look there. Otherwise, it won't be available again until it is released in the next annual Stampin' Up! catalog, which will be available June 2018. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this tool. Um, so this is a stamp positioner. Um, it comes, it's about 8x8 eight eight approximately. It comes with two plates that slide in and are hinged. When you store it, you don't want to have both in the hinges because it doesn't close properly and you don't ever want to apply pressure because then you'll you risk damaging the hinges. So to take them out and put them in, you just put it upright and slide it in and out. Okay, um, And then this one comes out as well. And then there is a foam mat. You use the foam mat when you use photopolymer stamps. Um, but that comes out and then the bottom has a grid. It measures about seven inches by seven inches of space. Um, and it's grid and it's in it's inlaid. So it will there's no risk of this ever rubbing off. I forgot to mention that on here there is a grid that is etched in, so it allows for you to easily position your stamp so that they're straight. And then on the back, there are two magnets. Now these magnets are super, super strong. You don't ever want them to get too close together so that they attract one another because they will snap together. Um, if your fingers are in between, they will pinch um, and they, have, they run the risk of breaking because they snap together so hard. So I've been making a habit of if I'm using both magnets, I put one on one side and one on the other. And I, so far I've been okay. The other thing that I've done, as you can see here, is I've added some thick washi tape around it. Um, I don't have fingernails, so I found that I was having a hard time getting the picking up the magnet off of the board because this this surface is super magnetic. Um, so I was having a problem with them um, coming up. So I find with this, this just allows me to give it a little pull, and it helps release it a little bit better. Okay. So I'm going to take these off because we are going to use those in a minute and we will flip this over. So I'm, now I'm going to share a little bit about how to use this. Now there are tons of different ways I'm sure that you can use this. So I'm just going to share a couple ways that you can use it for right now. And I just want to make sure it's in the shot so you can see as much as possible. Okay, so I'm going to put my mat down because this is I'm using a photopolymer stamp set and I will put this in because we will be using that and we'll put this one in. Okay, so what I've done and I've positioned some of the stamps already just for this first time. You'll see me position the other ones in a, a few minutes when I go to show you the second thing, but just to save some time and from you having to look at, at my head <laughs> trying to line them up straight. So the stamp set that I'm using is one called Amazing Congratulations. It will be in the 2018 Stampin' Up! Occasions catalog. Um, and this is a three-step stamp. So because these are removable, you actually have four surfaces. So I'm gonna show you how you can use all four surfaces. Okay, so first up, I have got some white cardstock and I'm going to line it up right in the corner and make sure it's up against both sides. Okay, and then I'll put my magnet down and I'm going to set my magnet right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up this. This is the outline image. So I like to start with the outline image. And I am using Lemon Lime Twist. And this isn't really the most convenient to ink it up this way. I'd rather have it flat, but I want to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm just applying the ink onto the stamp and you know what on occasion you will find that you'll get ink on the surface now I just have one of these wet absorber cloths that 
I just kind of give it a wipe, any excess ink off of there. But one thing that I want to point out is if you do get excess ink around the edges, you actually don't have to worry because it will not transfer to your cardstock. Um, but what I have found is sometimes I'll get it on my fingers and then my fingers get it onto the cardstock. So I've made, start, started to make a habit of wiping that clean. And that absorber cloth, that is this. It's called the absorber. It's in the car section. So it's actually like kind of like a chamois to clean your cars. And it comes moist and I just keep it in a Ziploc bag and it stays moist for pretty long. And when it's, it dries out, then you just re-wet it, wring it out, and use, keep using it. So it's a great stamp cleaner. Um, and I've picked that up at Canadian Tire. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon and a few different places as well. So now that I've talked so much, let's just give this another inking. And then I'm going to close that and apply a little bit of pressure. And then open it up. And you can see that I did not, and I kind of did that on purpose so that you could see how I can fix this. So you can see that it's not well inked here. It is over here, but I didn't apply enough pressure there. So I'm going to re-ink it. Making sure that I've got that in the center. And then I can just re-stamp it because it's in exactly the same spot. And this time I'll apply a little bit more pressure in that spot there. There we go. And actually, you know what? That could even still, I think my ink pad needs to be re-inked. Let's just apply a little bit more. So I can do this as many times as I want because it's perfectly positioned. So that's another great use for this tool. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I want to ink up, as you can see for this step. So there's a couple different images that you can stamp to add color on the inside of these letters. So, I'm going to ink up with Daffodil Delight, one of them here, and then just close that. So here's my second surface, just apply a little bit of pressure there, okay, and that turned out okay. I find that the photopolymer stamps, they do tend to stick a little bit, so sometimes your cardstock will move, but that's okay because I can just reposition it right in the center or right up against in that corner, up against the corner, and put my magnet back on. Okay, so now let's give that a wipe because I'm gonna rotate this. So I'll just quickly clean my stamp. And then I need a third surface so I'm going to pull this out rotate it around and that third stamp is going to be on here on this side I'm going to go back to the green the lemon lime twist ink that up and then close this apply some pressure and there we go look at that so everything is perfectly positioned. So this is great for three-step stamps, but let's say I wanna use that fourth side. So the other thing that you can do, this time I'm gonna put this over here, is I want to use the fourth side, so I need to use the back of this guy. So this is how you position your stamps. So I'll pull this out, rotate it over. So I have not set the stamp down. So I am going to use the You Couldn't Be Any More Amazing. You Couldn't Be More Amazing. So you want to put the, the flat side up because that is going to be what sticks to this surface. I'm going to position this where I want it, and I apologize if my head is in the camera view there. That looks pretty good. It looks straight. I'm going to close this. Just apply a little bit of pressure and then I'm going to ink this up because I want it to be green and I'll put that down apply a little bit of pressure and there we go it's perfect um, so this tool is great if you're stamping multiples so I mean even though it was fabulous for do doing this just once which is great 
if I was doing this as a swap card or if I was making this for, let's say, my team, I could just line this up in the corner and I can reuse these all the time because they're in exactly the same spot. So it makes stamping multiples a breeze. So when you, if you're a big swap maker, this is gonna be perfect for that. Or if you like to make multiples of the same card, it's great for that. But like I said, it's not only for multiples, it makes lining things up so much easier. Okay, so let's take these off because I'm gonna show you some, another way that you can use it. I will stick these back in the case afterwards. Okay. All right, so next up, I am going to use a stamp set that is called Amazing You. This is a celebration stamp set, so something that you can earn for free starting on January 3rd. And this is one of our red rubber stamps. So for when you use these, I'm gonna use the word amazing. You do not need this foam piece because our red rubber already has the foam in it. So you don't need to use this. So I'll take that off. And what I want to do is I have my cardstock here, and I need to figure out the way where I want the word. Open this right up here, and because I've got a larger piece of cardstock, I'm going to use both magnets this time. Okay, so I want it to be. Well, let's show you the finished card for that last one. So here's the finished card here. Okay, so um, I want this to be kind of over here, right about there. The other thing that I found is helpful is if you cut your cardstock a little bit larger than what you'd actually like it to be, um, and then trim it down afterwards, I find it's a little bit easier. Okay, so let's try that. The great thing about these lines is that you can see to make sure that they're straight, but if you're still unsure, a little trick that I learned is to use, this is our imaging sheet that actually came with our stamp -a -Majig. Um, but you can use any kind of plastic. Anything that you can see through will work. Okay, so now I'm using Elegant Eggplant and I'm going to just ink that up. It doesn't have to be too perfect because I just wanna stamp it on here to see if my word is straight. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'll just wipe that clean. So this stamp image or this imaging sheet will come in handy, um, especially with the red rubber, just to make sure that things are aligned the way you want them to be. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how the hinges work. So um, this is called the hinge step. So first of all, I've inked up my image with elegant eggplant. I'm going to stamp it once on here and I want it to be really dark so I'm going to stamp it again. Okay, and then I'm going to move it down one notch and I'm going to re-ink it. And I'm going to stamp it again. And then I'm going to move it down a notch and not re-ink it. So I kind of want I'm looking for that ombre effect. And move it down one more time. And stamp it again. So that is called a hinge step. So you can repeatedly stamp in exactly the same position um, and just go down by just simply removing that and moving it down. So everything will be evenly spaced. So that is a fabulous way to use this tool as well. Um, and this, without that foam pad on there, these things, these suckers are super tight on there. Okay, and then the finished card for this is, this is what it looks like here, and I was inspired by something that I saw on Amy Conders, I think that's her, her name. She did a video showing a card very, very similar to this. Okay, so you can see that it gradually gets lighter. So that's that card. Um, let's give this a clean and move it out of the way. And I wanted to show you something else. Okay, let's close this up so we don't get ink on here. Another great thing that you can do with this is 
um, you can use it as a template. So, for example, here I have um, I've created a template. Where's my heart? Okay, using a framelit from a set that is in the occasions catalog. The name escapes me, um, but there's a whole box that you get that you can create with it, and then there's some random shapes as well. So there's some hearts in there and a few other things. So what I've done is I've created a template, and this is a photopolymer stamp. So this will work with photopolymer stamps. Uh, here's the set here. So it's called Heart Happiness. So this will work with photopolymer stamps. Um, and there is an alteration that you can do to the same technique to, to use it with red rubber stamps as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, let's put this on here. Oh, we need the, get the foam mat here because we're using a photopolymer stamp set. Okay, I'm going to stick that in there. Put that up there. And I'm going to put this in here. And then what I'm going to do is line this up inside here. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip that I discovered afterwards. If you do your template, if you're stamping mostly on white, and I know it's gonna vary for the most part, but do your template in a different color because I find that white with white, it's a little bit hard to see, so it might not line up perfectly. Whereas if your template is in a different color and your blank piece, whatever it is that you're stamping on, is in a white or a neutral or even a different color than that, um, it's much easier to line up because you can see where that heart is a little bit better. Okay, So now I've got that and I'm not too concerned that that picked that up because I can just position it right back in here and it will line up perfectly. So now I need an ink. Okay, so for this one I'm going to use Rich Razzleberry just ink this up. Now I discovered when I was making this card that my stamp is actually defective so I need to call Stampin' Up and have them replace that. It's got some little marks in it that it shouldn't have. So you might notice that when you go to stamp it. Okay. I'll just apply a little bit of pressure and then Peel it off and look at that. Beautiful. And you know what? That didn't line up perfectly. So let's go back and see if we can do it again. And let's hope it works. It should. great thing about this stamp is it's meant to look a little bit more distressed anyways. So look at that, it lined up perfectly. Beautiful. So you can see that it's got those little marks in it and that's not how it's meant to be. Um, so Stampin' Up! will replace that for me, that's not a problem. Okay, so that's how you can use it as a template. So if you were using red rubber where you couldn't see through this stamp to line it up on your template, all you need to do is stick your red rubber on. Okay, let's just use this as an example. This isn't the best example, but so let's say you want to create your template. So you'll stick this where you want it on the block or on the, the flap, ink it up, stamp it onto a piece of cardstock, and then take it over to the big shot, cut out whatever shape it is that you wanted, and then you bring back your negative space with the piece that fits in there, and that is your template. Hopefully that's clear. So it's basically the same thing. The only thing is you need to recreate that template every single time that you use it because each time that you use it, um, your stamp will be mounted on a different place on here. Okay? So that's how you can use it as a template when you're using uh, red rubber stamps. Um, here is a card that I created doing the, that same technique. So a little thank you card. So what I did was I cut out the heart from this patterned paper, which is gorgeous patterned paper in the Occasions catalog. 
Um, and then I mounted it to a piece of white that is slightly larger. And then I stuck that down and stamped the heart in between. So instead of having the die cut heart that is stamped, this heart is actually stamped on the white piece in behind, but it's lined up perfectly in that heart. Okay, so that's another way that you can use it. So I'm sure that there's going to be a ton of other ways that come out that this tool can be used for. Um, but so far I've had, I've played with it for a day or so and these are the things that I've come up with. I've created lots of other cards using it. It's great for stamp sets that are like three step stamps like I showed you on the first one. Here's another bunny set or a bunny set that's coming out in the next catalog that was created with it. Um, so lots and lots of potential with this tool. But like I said, it is only available to reserve um, until December 30th of 2017. And then you won't have the, uh, another opportunity to get it until um, June of 2018. So be sure to reserve your copy so that you can get your hands on this sooner than later. And uh, you'll find all the details on my blog at stamptreasures.com. All right, thanks for watching.